Hello guys, it's Pete from MyJuryBunch.com. Today I'm going to cover three modifiers that you can use in sequence and all together to make some pretty cool and interesting models for anything that you're designing, whether it be jewelry or anything else. Those modifiers are the wireframe modifier, the solidifier modifier, and the subdivision surface modifier. Before we get started with the next part of our video and our tutorial, I just want to talk to you a little bit about Blender Gems. Some of you guys know about Blender Gems, some of you don't. Blender Gems is a library of a couple hundred models that I've done in Blender that you can use with any 3D program. All of these models are tested with 3D printing and have all been remeshed to work as like Lego blocks where you can pull in certain designs create your own models, modify them in any way you want, and then print them in 3D or use them for jewelry designs. This helps support my channel, guys, and if you want to purchase it, it is $50. You can get it available at myjewelrybench.com, uh, or if you are a Patreon supporter at Tier 2, which is a $5 per month level, you get all of these models, any updates, as well as other models that I do um, for free at that support level. Again, all this goes to help my channel, and I appreciate all the support I get. Let's get started on the tutorial. So these three modifiers that I want to show you today are called the Solidify modifier, the Wireframe modifier, and the Subdivision modifier. So let's first add a mesh. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do Shift A, and we're going to come over to Mesh Items. I'm going to add in a cone. I'm going to rotate this cone. Right now I've got it set for eight vertices. It should come up default 32. Just change that to eight. I'm going to rotate this along the X axis by pressing R to rotate X and then 180. And that should rotate it 180 degrees. I'm going to select my edit tool. So I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to come over here on the top corner. I'm going to select the face tool. I'm going to grab this face on top, I'm going to press X and then remove faces. So now I'm left with an open cone. Now we've got the open cone here. Let's go back into object mode by pressing the tab key. I'm going to come down to my modifiers tool, which is a little wrench, and I'm going to add three different modifiers. The first modifier I'm going to add is called the wireframe modifier, and that should give us a wireframe that encompasses all the vertices along our mesh. So right now I'm going to leave all these settings, uh, the default settings, and I'm going to add in another modifier. The next modifier I'm going to add in is a solidify modifier. And this allows us to make our mesh a little bit thicker. So I'm going to leave that back at zero, just so we're at the default position. And I'm going to lower that up. And we're going to add one more modifier called the subdivision surface modifier. And this should change our model significantly. And you can see it does. And what I want to do now, just to get some more definition in our model, is change the subdivisions here. So I'm going to drop, or I'm going to bring up render to three. I'm going to bring up the viewport to three. Uh, most of your computers should handle that without a problem. So I've got that all set, and I'm just going to minimize this subdivision surface modifier just like that. I'm going to bring up the wireframe, and I'm going to come down here and open up the solidify. <coughs> Okay, with that selected now, there's some really cool things that you can play with. So if I want to increase the thickness of our wireframe, I can adjust it now, and you can see it really changes our model. So I'm adding some thickness to this. It's pretty cool. Now, you can see that in your model, you're gonna have this little valley here that kind of leaves this open. And of course, in 3D printing, if you're gonna use something like this for 3D printing, we can't have that, you have to have a solid. So we can come down to our uh, solidify model and I believe if we hit uh, one of these tools here, a oh, boundary tool on the wireframe. So I'm going to hit the boundary tool and that solidifies our entire model along the wireframe. Now with that selected I'm going to come over here to smooth surface and you can see we have this really cool looking cone. And I can still make changes to it because I haven't applied any of the modifiers. So if I want to make this a little thicker I can just bulk it up a little bit. If I want to add some thickness to the, uh, the way this is, I can kind of adjust the, the, uh, the thickness on the solidify. So I want this real thick, I can make it real thick, and you can see that number as it goes down increases the thickness, as it goes up it decreases the thickness. So I'm just going to put that about here, 
and that looks pretty cool to me. The subdivision surface, I'm pretty happy with these subdivisions here. So what I'm going to do now is just apply all of these. So we can come over to the top here where it says apply all modifiers. And if I do that, now I have a mesh. And if we enter edit mode by pressing the tab key, you can see my mesh is all formed. What can you do with that mesh? Well, a really cool thing is I could use this to make maybe a really interesting looking head. So if I come over to my tools and let's see here, I'm gonna grab in a mounting. Let's just find a simple little mounting about something like this. And I'm going to append that. Should bring it in. I'm gonna size this up a little bit. I'm gonna lower that down. Come over to one to see what that looks like. Um, of course, we don't really want uh, that bottom showing here. So remember, I've taught you how to use the Boolean tool. So I'm going to hit Shift A. I'm going to add in a mesh cube. I'll lower that down a little bit right about here. And I am going to select the cube, hold the Shift key down, select the new design I have. I'm going to come over to my Boolean tools, which is hidden. I'm going to grab that in there, and I am going to choose difference. Now I've cut that little tip off that end, and what I'm left with is this interesting looking ring. And if I go over to uh, rendered view, I'll give this a white metal material, just so you can see what it looks like. And we're going to select new, metal, silver, and I'm going to change the shank over to gold. And there we have this really cool ring. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm just gonna delete this object off my screen and we're gonna try something else. I'm gonna add in a cube. I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna size that up to uh, the Z axis, S, Z. I'm gonna just drag that and kind of make it a little taller. I'm gonna hit the tab key and go to edit mode. I'm gonna hit the uh, control R to give me an edge loop and I'm gonna add two edge loops by using my wheel on the mouse and scroll up to get two. Press the right button Press it again, and now they are conformed to that. I'm gonna select my face tool right here. I'm gonna click on the bottom face, and with that selected, I'm gonna hold the Shift key down, and I'm gonna hold the Alt key down, and select the face next to it along the side, and that gives us the parameter of the bottom group of faces. Now what I wanna do is size these, but I don't wanna change the size on the Z axis, so if you see, if I hit S to size, it makes it narrower. We don't want to do that, so I'm going to hit S, Shift, Z, so I size along the X and Y axis only. I'm going to make that a little smaller, just about like that. And now I will hit Tab to go into Object Mode. I'm going to make this a little shorter along the Z axis, just about like so. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go back into Edit Mode. I'm going to select the Face tool here. I'm going to come down and grab the top face, hold the shift key down, and grab the bottom face. So both of those faces are selected. Press the X key and delete the faces. So now I have an open cube, kind of looks like a heating duct vent. We're going to hit object mode. We're going to do the exact same thing we just did with the ring. I am going to come down and add in some modifiers. So we'll come down to the modifier tab. I will add in a wireframe. I will then add in another and we'll do the solidify. And then the last one I will add in the order that I want them is the subdivision surface. With that all selected, again, we will do the same thing. We're gonna adjust the boundary here so that we close that up. And I will give this a little bit of a thickness just to see what it looks like. And that looks pretty bad, but we're gonna change the subdivision down here on the subdivision surface. So I'll increase this to three. Again, the viewport, I will increase to three gives us some definition. Maybe I'll change that to four each. And that looks pretty good. I like that. And under thickness, again, we can just make this a little bit thicker. We can make it a little bit thinner, however we want to do it. You can see if you go too thin, you get some really weird shapes, but actually that doesn't look too bad. So if you wanted something kind of interesting, you can play with these and get them all to work. Now I'm not gonna do anything more with this. We're just gonna delete this item here and I'm gonna show you how to do, let's say a plane. Shift A, well, let's add in a mesh plane. And now what I wanna do is subdivide this. So you're gonna go into edit mode with the tab key. You're gonna right click on this and subdivide. Uh, I'm gonna subdivide twice. So subdivide one more time, or you can do it down here. Now I want to grab the entire mesh and we'll go back into object mode. I'm gonna hit S, X to size this along the X axis. That looks pretty cool. 
hit tab to go into edit mode. And now what I want to do is grab these vertices here, as well as the bottom vertices there. So we're going to select our vertices tool. And now you can see the vertices are highlighted in orange. Those are the little points. Or I'm sorry, those are the vertexes. Yep. And the edges are not. So we're going to first hit A to deselect everything. Hit A8. Once everything's deselected, you're going to hold the mouse button down while you drag and select the first group of vertices. Hold the shift key down and then on the bottom here we're going to grab these. You're going to do the same thing. Click and drag. Now the upper and lower vertices are selected in our model. I want to make those a little smaller and I want to make them smaller along the Y axis. So we're going to hit S, Y and then I'm going to make them smaller. You can see we can make them bigger or smaller. You can do whatever you like. You can just play with this. I'm making these a little smaller. I'm going to grab this vertice here, hold the shift key down and grab the next vertice. So I have those two vertices selected. And with those two vertices selected, I'm going to make sure I'm in proportional editing. I'm going to hit S, Y, and I'm going to make those a little bit bigger. And you can see it takes the inner two loop cuts I made and also makes those a little bit bigger. So I have this, this interesting look. If we look at it from the top, um, I can do that again, S, Y and just make this a little bit more curvy. That looks pretty cool. I like the way that looks. Now, still in proportional mode, I'm going to grab the center vertice, and we are going to pull up on that, just like so. And my circle of influence, you can see that circle around the model, and when I move the mouse wheel, I have control over that. So what I'm going to do is just make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to bring this up so it's kind of like a dome. That looks pretty good to me. And with that selected, I'm going to go back into object mode. And one more time, we are going to add in those three modifiers. I will add in the wireframe modifier. Once again, I will add in the solidify modifier. And then lastly, I will enter the subdivision surface modifier. <coughs> again, I'll make the changes. We'll increase this to four here, down here with the viewport to four. And I will make the quality four. It doesn't really matter. We're not subdividing it that much. I am going to hit the boundary box here, and then I will give this a little bit of a thickness. And again, we can adjust exactly how much we want in that. I'm just going to leave that at zero, just change it back to zero. And here you can see we have this really cool looking, uh, kind of somewhat dome shape to our, we'll call this a mesh, an open mesh which is pretty cool if you want something like this on the surface of a ring. Now here's the thing, when I minimize these here, I'm not going to apply them yet, I'm just going to minimize these. Depending on the surface or depending on the order of these modifiers will change the surface. So if I move the subdivision surface up one by pressing the up arrow, you can see it slightly changes. And then again, if I move it to the top, you can see now it really changes it. So it's important to play with these until you get to the point where you are happy with just how your model works. The order of the subdivisions happens in a top-down manner. So first apply the wireframe, it'll secondly apply the solidify, and then lastly the subdivision surface. So always keep that in mind. And go ahead and play with these models because you can make some pretty interesting things. Um, I really enjoy playing with these. It just seems like a lot of fun. And just the last, I'm going to show you how to do a uh, Ico sphere and what I want to do now is the same thing. We're going to do subdivisions. I'm going to drop this down to one, although you can change it to whatever you want. And I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. We're going to zoom out a little bit. And again, I'm going to add in those three modifiers, the wireframe. We'll add in the uh, solidify and then one more, the subdivision surface. And I always like to change these first. So you can change these values to whatever you want. Um, if you want them lower or higher, just remember the higher you go, the longer it'll take to work on your model. Uh, again, I'm going to close up the boundaries, make that a little bit thicker. And let's see, we can do whatever we want here with the solidify. I can flip my normals, make this even. Uh, fill rim, close rim, open rim. You got all kinds of little factors depending on how you want these to work. If again, I move this up to the top, we get a slightly different model that has some ribbing to it. And I'm just gonna move that back down so that our model looks pretty cool like that. 
So that's how you use those three modifiers to get some pretty interesting shapes in an object mode, not a curve. Remember, these only work on mesh objects. So any time you want to, you just have to remember wherever there's an edge on your model, it will put a wireframe in that position. Guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and I will see you later.